I accept your nomination to be President of the United States of America. Kamala Harris's 37-minute keynote speech introducing herself to the American public was much like the Democratic Convention. Well-delivered, confident and optimistic, it was also mostly devoid of policy substance. Whether she can keep this up, unexplained and unexposed, into November will determine whether she becomes America's 47th president. The harmony between my parents did not last. When I was in elementary school, they split up. And it was mostly my mother who raised us. The vice president opened with a lengthy account of her own background, relying heavily on the story of her mother's lessons and resilience as a divorced single parent. She worked long hours. And like many working parents, she leaned on a trusted circle to help raise us. It's not an unusual American story, which may have been the point as she tries to convince voters to take a risk on someone they know little about. I promise to be a president for all Americans. You can always trust me to put country above party and self. Ms. Harris then turned to the main business at hand. The consequences of putting Donald Trump back in the White House are extremely serious. Her attack on Donald Trump was a mix of truth and falsehoods. Truth about his effort to overturn the 2020 election, but falsehoods that he intends to cut Medicare and Social Security. We know what a second Trump term would look like. It's all laid out in Project 2025. Mr Trump has repeatedly disavowed Project 2025 and has shown no plan or interest in touching entitlements despite their looming bankruptcy. Donald Trump hand-picked members of the United States Supreme Court to take away reproductive freedom. Her largest distortion concerned abortion, claiming that Mr Trump wants to pass a national ban on reproductive rights, which is the euphemism Democrats now use for abortion. He and his allies would limit access to birth control, ban medication abortion, and enact a nationwide abortion ban with or without Congress. Mr. Trump has stated time and again that abortion should be a state issue and he won't sign a national ban. Ms. Harris, however, would take action. When Congress passes a bill to restore reproductive freedom as President of the United States, I will proudly sign it into law. Ms. Harris attempted to lay out her vision for her presidency, but it was mostly empty platitudes. We will create what I call an opportunity economy. She will provide opportunity, though she didn't say how. We will end America's housing shortage. She will solve the housing crisis without saying how or explaining why there's a crisis on her watch. And she will reduce prices without a repeat of her recent proposal to impose price controls. As president, I will bring together labor and workers and small business owners and entrepreneurs and American companies to create jobs, to grow our economy, and to lower the cost of everyday needs like health care and housing and groceries. This lack of specificity is part of a strategy to separate herself from the Biden-Harris years by calling for a vague new way forward. We will pass a middle-class tax cut that will benefit more than 100 million Americans. The idea seems to be that the less specific she is, the less chance she'll be associated with the unpopular parts of the Biden tax, regulate and spend agenda that produced a decline in real American incomes. Until she disavows this agenda, voters can assume they are also her proposals. As president, I will stand strong with Ukraine and our NATO allies. The vice president wisely devoted several minutes on foreign policy to meet the test of being commander in chief. But again, it lacked substance. She promised to maintain a strong military, though without separating herself from Mr. Biden's defense cuts after inflation. Her support for Ukraine sounded unequivocal. But on Israel and Gaza, she sought to have it both ways. President Biden and I are working to end this war such that Israel is secure, the hostages are released, the suffering in Gaza ends, and the Palestinian people can realize their right to dignity, security, freedom, and self-determination. There were vague mentions of Iran and China, but again, nothing of substance. Her real views and instincts remain a mystery. 
The speech and the convention are likely to give Ms. Harris a boost in the polls, but they also give Mr. Trump an opening because of her flight from substance. He now needs to smoke out the vice president on her policy views, which she'll attempt to disguise until the end. Calling her Comrade Kamala won't do it, nor will labels like Marxist and Communist. He needs to question how she can be the mantle for change she claims to be after spending the past four years as Mr. Biden's sidekick. Swing voters need to be told what Ms. Harris's real plans are and why it matters. Kamala Harris is eminently beatable, but Mr. Trump will need to do more than just repeat his stale lines from 2016. If he can't make voters see that the vice president's views on energy, taxes, spending and so much more are out of step with middle America, he will lose.